What's up guys, this is Shona and today we are in Sejati Lakeside Cyber Jaya A different twist to it in the sales gallery slash show unit of Sejati Lakeside. For those who are not familiar with Cyber Jaya, it was a dream master plan that was ready with infrastructure, ready to plug in with all public amenities and facilities. Kind of like the next level township back then. What's very cool today is we are at a landed property site. Majority of the landed properties in Cyber Jaya are all sold out and the price some can be even lower than the high-rise and apartments which is like pretty ludicrous. Individual titles are more. Free holes some more. We are right here. And just to put yourself into context, we are in between Cyber Jaya 9 and Cyber 10. And just to point out a little bit, it's away from all the action, the hustle and bustle of the city of Cyber Jaya. And this is where all the landed projects are actually located at. So if you look into the surrounding, all are new landed properties around this area. And what's exciting will be this upcoming MRT station that's going to be exchanging with the KLIA Transit. Ah. There are four product types. Everything is north-south facing. Then you have rainwater harvesting initiative around here. Then you have the lake to cool down the overall temperature. Also, all of these are Malaysian favorite individual title terrace houses. So it means you get to enjoy all these screens and facilities without paying a very hefty maintenance fee. Today we're going to check out a double storey terrace house, 22 by 70. So it means like 22, this side 70 in depth. And let's go check it out. Okay guys, so we are in this 22 by 70, two storey terrace house and the build up for intermediate is 2, 5, 4, 6 lah. and what you get is a 4 spacious bedroom around here and 4 ensuite bathroom the length is 6700mm and this one is around 21 meters if we go in from the car porch so this is the living, dining, dry kitchen already and there will be a wet kitchen here and the ground floor bedroom sharing a bathroom downstairs and then we go upstairs there will be a family hall here and then there's two bedrooms with their own ensuite toilet as well as a principal room with their principal bathroom coming into the main entrance right the foyer space is bigger than usual usually the wall actually starts around here where you have the prayer table and all but this one starts way further so you have this cabinet space that is huge and the staircase starts a bit later here you have the living and the dining and the dry kitchen already so it's one glance everything also complementing the feeling of space you can see the very high ceiling height as well as that huge window span that allows more daylight and ventilation to happen you have your storeroom yeah next to it will be your breakfast counter now terrace house also got breakfast counter already because this is a corner lot that's why you have this window here if not intermediate you don't have lah so please do take note and that is the kitchen already you look at how deep the kitchen is this is not supposed to be your usual kitchen scale you have your oven here it's a toilet already and this is the backyard very spacious and it's 3 meter ceiling height right it's really complementing a lot of things wow it's crazy Right, so your basin is around here and I don't know why is it so big? Why is it so big? This is where they sell, it's very elderly friendly, right? And I can see why because of the scale of the space. Huh? To really have empathy for people on wheelchair, you gotta really feel it. We also have this small platform where they can actually move themselves. Somewhat move themselves here, a sitting platform so they can actually take shower here. And this space as well, not only for the elders, if you have two children at home right, and you need to bathe them together at the same time, you will appreciate space like this. Lah. <laughs> and here you have your basin, full high water house. Uh, yeah. And you have this thing, this slope to ease the circulation for wheelchair from this ground floor bedroom to the washroom itself. I really like this bathroom. Uh, just I wish that if there could be slopes as well, but that's asking a lot. Uh. I really, really appreciate the sophistication in our product design already. So we are taking care of 
people who are in need. And most of the time, these designs don't usually cost a lot more if you design prior to the construction phase, right? Good job, team. Good job. This is your ground floor bedroom. You have your work desk here and that huge window. Then your wardrobe space. And you have the very big circulation space next to your queen size bed. So four feet there with case, tiles, finish, steel handrail. I like. Also, I like how they balance between the clearance height of a human being. It means for this space, it needs to be clear for a person at my height. My height is okay, but I'm quite short. <laughs> but a, a taller person to actually not knock on the head. But then this will actually be part of the space for the principal bedroom. So it's a balance between this clearance height as well as the space for your bedroom. Get it? Coming upstairs, this will be your family hall. What defines a space? It's up to the furniture inside. If I were to put all my guitars here, my pianos here, it's a music room. If I were to put gym equipment here, then it's a fitness room. If I were to put books, racks here, right? Then it will be a library. Hence, it's really up to you how you want to define the usage of the space. So what you should really observe and pay attention to is the three vectors, which is the area and height of the space. In this case, it's huge la, because they do extend this out to minimize the void. La. They don't find the void very useful in a terrace house, obviously. So they build up this platform to increase the floor area of the family hall. bedroom and you can see it's huge, it's spacious, it's bright. I really appreciate the design trends of landed properties nowadays, right? It's really getting better and better. Just check out the window span and this day bed design, right? Or a bay window design. Like. King size bed. Your wardrobe this side, which is kind of weird, but I think this is only for him because this is all for her. <laughs> your wife. This is your principal bathroom. And the design? Oh, so they have the actual floor tiles here and the wall tiles displayed. So this white is only for ID designer. The celebrity for basin and WC. Okay, moving opposite, you will have the two bedrooms and it's identical. Again, the ceiling height is very nice. You have that back window and this will be the ensuite bathroom. And again, it's by La Celebrity. La Celebrity. Bidet, tissue holder, showers, full height wall tiles, window ventilation. Everything is provided. Nice. Checking out the next room, right? I think uh, they could have just reduced the height of the switches. Not expensive to do also. But this is your like rebellious kid premium room. So you have your bed here, similar. Then you have your wardrobe here. Then you have your work desk facing the window behind. And then you have the similar treatments of the toilet. I'm very perplexed on how they can make the unit feel so big, right? Then I really drill down onto the layout. First of all, they extend it fully, which means right, that new owners that comes in, right, you don't need to extend your kitchen anymore. Then they minimize the yard space to accommodate this huge bathroom. That is out the space for both the bedroom downstairs as well as the kitchen space. Another thing is they shorten the staircase. That allows more space for this foyer itself. And as we mentioned just now at the staircase area, they extended this platform in balance to the clearance height of the staircase, right? That allows this walk-in wardrobe to be huge as well. And because of the length fully extended, so you have this amount of space for your bedrooms and you get to shift everything backwards a little bit that gives a better clearance space for your principal bedroom and your family hall. And one cool fact is the phase one actually sold out. So phase two is launching pretty soon. Phase one was 788,000, which is pretty equivalent to the three bedroom apartments you need around Cyberjaya. So after spoken to the sales staff, people from airy places like Ampang, la, Kota Kebuning, la, Ujong, la, Sri Kembangan, la, all are buying this project because of the price number 1780. It's an opportunity to upgrade from a three bedroom apartment into a landed terrace house. Very clearly, this is a own stay unit and... So if you're looking for commercial needs, right, uh, you can come over here to Tamarind Square and right opposite, 
you have some commercial lots as well, some shop offices and things like that. Also, you have your Jaya Grocers, right, which is like very convenient here. And that's a 24 hours bookstore here where I usually hang out. Lah. We are now at the park, the main park of Cyber Jaya. People forget the different aspect of own stay. So if for own stay, parks like this are incredible. This is where you can actually bring your families and all. Especially the weekends, you can really feel that the amount of population and traffic right, really greatly reduced. Not like currently like, because now quite a lot of cars or so. And right at the same street as well, MMU is here. Now we are at the Pulse. The Pulse is just behind where you can get all your commercial needs that like you want to go for food, you want to go for grocer, you want to go for entertainment like movies and things like that. It's all there. You should really come and check it out on the weekends because it's packed. Around here there's all the commercial building and this is the more business district side of Cyber Jaya where you have the Quill Tree, the IBM office is around here and all the offices like MDAC is here, TM is here, DHL is here, everybody's here and there's also a boom of international schools around these streets. We are now next to Lim Gok Wing and opposite right will be the upcoming MRT station already and that's going to be the biggest game changer around this area. Lah. KLIA Transit here you have the MRT2 here, then you have the Elite Highway, Max Highway as well. So I think accessibility wise is constantly being improved. But indirectly, you also have noise pollution like this, where you have all the trucks, right? Constantly in and out, all the way. Lah. So some price to pay, but I think it's amazing. So I think that's all. It's now time for Sean Take 3 on 3. Three things I really like, number one, which is the product itself. I think as a 2270, you feel it's way bigger than a usual one because they managed to squeeze out a lot of space from the staircase layout itself. They also like the marketing part where they put in a wheelchair for you to experience like how is it like to actually push up the tram itself. That I really appreciate. Number two, Cyber Jaya as an own stay location. A lot of people might think that Aya again, it's oversupplied. But on the other side of the story, right, you kind of see like Cyber 9 and 10, Tamarind, Symphony Hills, then you have Sejati and all. Those areas are 15 minutes away from the CBD area where you have the IBM, the MDAX, the DHL junctions, right? That location is pretty solid. So you come to think of it, if you really are informed with the traveling distance, right? This location seriously is very, very livable in that sense. Serenity, privacy, and affordability. Last of all, that constant improvement on infrastructure. Just when you thought Cyber Jaya is this dream township that was planned last time, right? Not only that, they have infrastructure first before buildings are up. And you now have the MRT2, which is going to connect to the KLIA Transit, all these kind of things, that constant improvements, right? It's really very hard to come by. Three things I'm pretty concerned of. Number one is the competition surrounding. If you look into Sejati, next to it, you have the Mulia, then you have Satya's one, you have Eco Glades, you have Islamic Development, which is that raw dark city. All landed are coming up in that area itself. If you're buying for own stay, I think it's fine. If you're buying to flip, right? Supply is something to take into consideration of. Number two is the lack of prosperous, lack of commercial activities in this area. That seriously created a stigma on this location itself. Last of all, there's still a lot of land around us. And because of that, I guess there will be never-ending development for the next 10-15 years. And now you can already see that there's trucks everywhere. So the noise pollution will be to a certain extent where you have just Vroom, 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 non-stop. So I guess that's all for this episode. I'm really enjoying this path of maturity for all of our housing designs. And with that, I think I'll end this episode. If you really like this episode, like it, share it, and even subscribe for more information like this. Until next time, see you on the next one. Ciao.